Today, Ryan and I visited the National Aeronautic and Space Administration in Houston, Texas. You may know it better as NASA. We got a tour of Johnson Space Center to learn all about real astronauts live and work in space. Come on, we'll show you around. Of all the NASA Space Centers, the Johnson Space Center is the largest. We saw all kinds of memorabilia, photos, and artifacts from different eras of space travel. Oh, Ryan, check this out. I think this is the model of an international space station. That's so cool. All right, let's find out what they do here. Hi, guys, I'm Nick. I'm Ryan. It's really nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you, Ryan. Nice meeting you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for coming in today. You are standing in the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility. This is a life-size version of the International Space Station where astronauts live and work while they're in space. Wait, this is actual size in space? It absolutely is. Okay, so is this module right over here? You're exactly right. That is actually the Columbus module that you're seeing here on the model. In fact, this whole building is laid out just as you're seeing on this model. All of the habitable modules, which is where they live and work, are inside of this building just as you see here in this case. How come there's a Japanese flag and a US flag right there? That's a really great question. So the International Space Station isn't just a name. It is truly an international effort. We built this International Space Station with partners from all over the world. In fact, over 280 people from over 22 different countries have visited the International Space Station in its 26 year history. One more question. What powers this whole thing? That's a great question, the sun. The solar panels on the end are how the entire station gets its power. Those solar panels are 240 feet tall, which makes it the brightest object in the night sky when it's catching the sunlight. So imagine the size of an American football field from end to end, over 100 yards. The solar panels are like four basketball courts on each end and two tennis courts for the radiators, which are these wavy panels you see going off the back. Ooh, what are these? These look like 3D printed? Yes, these are 3D printed materials. One of the many cool things we do on the International Space Station is experiment with 3D printing. We have traditional materials as well as a metal 3D printer that we're experimenting with currently. Next, we saw where the astronaut practice handling the equipment they will have to use in space. All the machines you see here are identical to the ones floating in space right now. All right, I think this is the uh, uh, mock-up where the astronaut can train inside. So there's actually somebody, the astronaut, inside training right now. Wow, that's so exciting. We have to be quiet because there's training going on right now. Come on, let's go. We were lucky enough to actually get taken inside one of the modules to see what it feels like to be an astronaut. Whoa. Look at all the buttons, Ryan. So now you are standing in the aft or the very rear of the International Space Station. This is the Russian service module. And yes, it looks exactly like this with a few little changes. Obviously, we have to make sure that the floors are clear and there's not a lot of stuff hanging off of the walls so that our astronauts and our engineers are safe when they're training. Dad, what are you doing? Oh, actually, this is a bedroom, Ryan. You can either strap yourself to the wall, or you can put yourself in the uh, sleeping bag, or you can sleep. All right, let's go check out more stuff. This is where they actually train, but I can't touch anything. Fun fact, every astronaut and cosmonaut or European astronaut or Japanese astronaut, wherever they're from, when they come to space, they have to speak Russian and American English at a minimum, which is why here in the Russian service module, Everything you see is in Cyrillic. Oh, and this tiny table is like a workstation? It is a workstation, but even more important on some days, this is where they have their meals. So the Russian crew and the remaining crew from the American European side will often gather here to have group dinners. Speaking of, I'm getting hungry. Is there any space food here? Let's go check it out. We asked these guys if they wanted to come to lunch with us. But they seem a little busy. So behind us, 
is the Soyuz spacecraft. This is a Russian craft, and it's one of three spacecraft that can take human beings to the International Space Station. What's cool about this one is it went to space in 1995 to the Mir space station, which was a Russian space station. You all want to go up and touch it? Sure, yeah. yeah. All right, follow me. It's so cool. So here it is, the Soyuz spacecraft. This is designed for three people to sit inside. If you look at the seats, you can see it's a very, very tight space. So it's important that you're of a certain size so you can all fit in there. Um, when you're ready, you can go ahead and touch something that went to space. All right, Ryan, for the first time, we actually get to touch something that came back from space. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Actually, can I go first? Okay, yeah. It's, 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 you, you're the kid. Come on, you go first. Okay. I did it, your turn. Here we go. Oh. Ah, I touched it! All right, now I feel space expert now. All right, ask me anything now. Well, let's just go. You'll never believe where we visited next. Mission Control Center. And speaking of missions... All right, guys, I'm landing this spacecraft onto the moon. Okay. This is intense. Go far. Do this. Everybody's depending on me. Oh, it's all looking good. No, I got this. That's what? We're still in the lobby. Okay, we gotta go. Yeah, let's go. go. Let's go. Welcome to Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas. So the room you're standing in is not Mission Control. This is just one flight control room of five flight control rooms that make up the entirety of Mission Control Centers here. So we focus on human space flight at Johnson Space Center. That means every day, the people in this room get to talk to and work with the crew that lives on the International Space Station. 365 days a year, 24 seven hours a day, this room is operational with people working in it. Okay, so who's in charge of everyone in this room? Great question. That's gonna be your flight director. The flight director is not only responsible for the people in the room, but responsible for the crew that is on station. This room, the first mission that was flown, was actually Apollo 7. We then did Apollo Soyuz. It moved over to Skylab, which was the first American space station. And then it flew shuttle missions and eventually became permanent International Space Station support. And what's the responsibilities of everyone here? Well, they have various duties and jobs that they have to accomplish on a daily basis. But the primary role of the people in Flight Control Room 1 is that they get to fly spaceships. They fly the International Space Station. They keep the power on, they keep the oxygen flowing so that the astronauts on station can actually do the science and the research that is helping everybody back here on Earth. Now we're at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. So what do they train for here? Great question, Ryan. So they train for spacewalks here. So every once in a while, astronauts and crew members have to go outside of the space station to make repairs or install new equipment, and this is how we do it. The water in the pool can simulate a microgravity environment that gives the astronaut the feeling like they're floating in space. So what's all this stuff underwater? Is it what I think it is? If you're thinking the International Space Station, then yes, you're right. So you remember the last building we were in, the Space Vehicle Mock-Up Facility that had all of the space station in it. We did that again, but we put it here underwater. If you look closely, one of the newest features here at the NBL is our Lunar Environment Training Area. We developed a special sand in-house that doesn't clump up and it doesn't cloud. So when you pick it up and you drop it, it falls right back where it went, just like the sand would on the moon. This is how we're testing new suits and technology and tools for our future missions to the lunar surface. Thank you so much, Nick, for showing us around and teaching us about what happens at NASA. It's my pleasure. Thank you for coming. You're always welcome back. Thank you. We're going to definitely come back again. Thank you. Looking forward to it.